can cut a circle with a skill saw. Hey everybody, welcome back to the homestead, or actually I should say, a homestead. This is uh, someone else's property. Um, this is how I make the money to pay for my homestead projects. Uh, I got the pleasure to build a yurt platform. It's a 24 foot round, it will be a 24 foot round yurt. Uh, the yurt is being manufactured right now. Uh, like I said, I got the pleasure to build this platform. I've built plenty of decks in my day, but never a, uh, a, a round or a circle deck. Uh, it's definitely been a, uh, a little learning experience, but luckily I found some plans online and it's actually pretty simple. Uh, let's, uh, let's rewind a little bit and see how I got to this point. Let's take a minute and talk about insulation. Uh, what we have here is XPS, also known as extruded polystyrene. There's about three different options you can choose for rigid insulation. Uh, you got your um, EPS, which is like packing foam, kind of the little styrofoam balls. And there is another one, I can't think of it right now, uh, but it does have a, it has a foil back usually and uh, kind of more of a tan color. Someone will probably know out there. This option works a little better because it is more resilient to, in moisture conditions. This will be exposed uh, from underneath to the elements. It won't be getting rained on or anything, but there will be moisture around when it rains and such. And this will hold up a little bit better. It does act as a um, vapor barrier because it, it's like a closed cell. So you'll notice that I put in uh, inch and a half spacers between this and the decking that's going on top. That allows for airspace in between the two so that if the moisture does get between there, it doesn't wick into the flooring or the, the subfloor. And that kind of allows some airflow in there to hopefully hinder that. And then what I'll do after everything's buttoned up is go underneath and screw this to those spacers and that'll help hold it up also. So uh, yeah, that's the insulation.
Let's talk decking real quick. This is inch and an eighth uh, TNG plywood. We went with this option because the people that are gonna have this yurt are gonna put in a floating floor, uh, hardwood or, or some sort of product. And this is your, your best option for that. The other option is uh, select deck, which is two by six tongue and groove. That's, uh, that option is used for if you're just gonna you keep that flooring and not put anything over it because you wouldn't wanna cover that up. This here allows them to cover this up and, and not, uh, not feel bad about it. I would feel bad covering up select deck. And it's also much quicker than five and a half inches at a time. This, uh, you're laying down 32 square feet at a time. Uh, when doing tongue and groove plywood, you, you need to uh, put blocking in every four feet. The other thing about inch and an eighth plywood is it's capable of spanning four feet compared to uh, a thinner plywood doesn't span as, as well. <clears throat> so that's, that's decking. Alrighty, let's talk compasses. Uh, this will be a 24 foot round circle. So I've, there's a couple of different options you can do. You can go with the board method like I'm doing here or a uh, rope or a string. Uh, I selected this method because I don't have any string that's, you don't want any string that stretches or any rope that stretches or anything. Plus I had some one by sitting around. So basically what I did is um, found the center of my platform and put a screw in there and or you could use a nail or anything and then measured 12 feet from that center point down there and drilled a hole just big enough for a number two or my favorite ticonderoga pencil <clears throat> i'll take the pencil put it in the hole and create my circle so yeah that's uh that's your compass We did it. It can be done. Cutting a circle with a skill saw. Let's check it out. One thing that I did have some trouble with was uh, when it got to the edges where the plywood met, just the weight of this plywood back here kind of ripped it off. So what I ended up doing, as you've seen, was just adding a board that kind of came out and held this, held the wood out here while I finished the cut over at the seam. And then I'd pull the board and it would not rip it up as bad. So yeah, you can cut a circle with a skill saw. All that practice cutting crooked boards works out pretty good. Whew. Next up, I gotta put a drip edge around it. Let's get started. <laughs> So let's talk about the icing on the cake. I think the cherry on top is going to be the uh, the yurt for sure, but this is uh, going to finish it up for the most part for my part of the project, the platform. This is what they call the drip edge. And it's uh, just a piece of 3 8 plywood. Pretty thin. 3 8 uh, siding is usually what this is used for. And they did that because it's bendable. The plans state to bring it up an inch above the platform. Uh, I haven't built a yurt. Hopefully I can hang out when this guy does it and maybe give a hand. But I'm guessing that 
this allows you, because the yurt kind of has like a lattice structure inside, I'm thinking this is what you attach the uh, lattice to. And then the fabric will come down and cover this. And then if any water, the water will shed off the uh, fabric and then down and off the structure. Uh, so yeah, this is the, uh, the last part. Uh, put the uh, drip edge on and then it will be visible. You know, a portion of this will be visible. So we'll put some stain on there and make it look good. So yeah, that's, uh, that's, uh, it's been fun. Cutting a, making a circle deck. It's definitely been fun. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.